Hi, welcome to Mr. Otter Studio. Today I'm going to be answering a question that some of you have had about drawing paper. What kind of drawing paper to use? Choosing paper to draw on seems like it would be pretty simple, but there are so many different papers to choose from when you go to the art supply store. So today I'm just going to tell you really briefly and quickly what kind of drawing paper you should be using. And first I'm going to ask you a question. What are you drawing with? Think of paper as the foundation of your drawing. It is pretty important to choose the right paper. I learned that while using Copic markers and it bled through and like ruined the finish on my table. I should have used the right paper for the medium that I was using. The first thing I'm going to explain is all of this information that's on the front of these drawing paper pads. This is going to tell you what kind of surface you're working with. The texture or the finish, this is smooth. So it erases cleanly. There's 60 sheets of paper in here. This is the size of it, it's nine by 12. And then what does this mean? 70 pounds. This is not 70 pounds, right? This is a lot lighter than that. What that means is the thickness of the paper. So for example, the drawing paper is 70 pounds. The sketch paper right here is 50 pounds. Tracing paper, much lighter than that, 25 pounds. So the thicker the paper, usually the more it can withstand with erasing, usually the more archival it is. You definitely wanna make sure that it is acid free. Newsprint is not going to be acid free. It's made out of wood. Typically drawing paper, the nicer paper is made from cotton. This Bristol paper is 96 pounds. So that's gonna be a little bit thicker. And this is also telling you that this one has two different surfaces. So there's a smooth and a textured side. So that's kind of nice. Have two options. There's basically three different categories of paper. There is sketching paper. So if you are just sketching, you could use anything. You don't even need to use paper. You could use pieces of cardboard. You could use printer paper. But if you go to the art store and you want to buy paper specifically for it, you can get newsprint. It's a great cheap paper for sketching. This is definitely what you usually begin with in a drawing class. It's really thin. It is made out of wood, so it's not archival. These papers are typically not meant to last a long time. They're just for practicing. Sketching. Use whatever paper you have. These are the two most common ones that you will see in an art supply store. Sketch paper and newsprint. The next category is tracing and transferring. You can buy charcoal transferring paper that you just put underneath your drawing and then draw right over it and it presses the charcoal into your paper. So then it'll leave an outline of what you have. I don't have any of that here. So this tracing paper is 25 pounds. That's really, really thin. I really love to use tracing paper with my Copic markers. So there's paper for sketching, which I showed. There's paper for tracing and transferring. And then there is paper for drying. If you are using markers, you really need to be careful with the paper that you're using, especially if you're using Copic markers. So they are alcohol based, so they will bleed right through your paper. Make sure you're using paper that is specifically for those markers. That's the only one I really try to stick to. I definitely will use markers on tracing paper because I really like it. You can try other surfaces, but this is nice because your marker is not going to bleed through. So again, it depends on what you're drawing with and what you're trying to draw, what its purpose is. So here are some things to think about. The material that it's made out of. You wanna make sure that your drawing paper, especially if you're drawing something that you want to last for a long time, is acid free. If it's made from cotton, it's going to be acid free, but if it's made from wood, which most paper is, you need to make sure it's acid free or else it's just not going to be archival. It's not gonna last for a very long time. There is paper that is made from cotton. This is a Stonehenge paper. This is about 90 pound paper. This is a Reeves BFK paper. These are both made from cotton, handmade. I love using these for printmaking, things like that. They're really big. As you can see, they don't really even fit on here, but you can cut them down to whatever size you want. These papers are made from cotton, so they're all archival, but they definitely are more expensive. The reason artists like to use them is they're thick, and so they're high quality, they're durable, they can handle a lot of erasing. They're archival, they're going to last for a long time. You need to get whatever is in your budget. So think about what it's made of, wood versus cotton. The next thing to think about is the weight. 
The heavier the paper, usually the more durable it's going to be. So let's just talk about the different weights of these different drying papers. This is 70 pounds, this is 96 pounds, and this is 140 pounds. What's the big difference? Well, I could use pencil and I could use watercolor on this paper, which is nice. It's really thick because it is 140 pounds. Like an okay watercolor paper is 140 pounds. Bristol paper, one thing that's nice about Bristol paper is you can use marker on it. Color pencil, pen and ink, pastels, you can use charcoal or you can use watercolor and you can use acrylic on Bristol so this paper is super versatile it can be a little bit more expensive than drying paper but you can use so many more things on it and it's going to last a little bit longer the three things you want to look at are the material it's made out of the weight and the texture and again you just choose whichever one you're looking for whatever is going to fit your drying style or what you're trying to create the last area to look at is the texture. Um, some things come really smooth, and smooth would be like vellum and this one, and this one actually has a smooth side and a textured side. Some artists like to use that textured side. Also, if you're using oil pastel or charcoal, you probably wanna use something with a little bit of tooth, a little texture, so that it holds on to that color a little bit better. The last thing to look at, of course, is the size. Make sure you're using the right size of paper for the drawing that you're trying to create. And that's it. So those are the three different categories. Hopefully now you know what paper to use for sketching, tracing and transferring, and drawing. And why you would want to use these different papers. In the end, of course, use whatever you have. Use what is available and in your budget. One thing to think about too, if you're using oil pastels or you're using charcoal or even colored pencils, is to use paper that is toned. So you can use paper that has a little bit of color. So you don't have to use white. You could use gray, you can use whatever. There's a lot of colors of paper. So that's one thing to throw in there, is think about maybe using a different background color, not just white. There's many different options. Have fun creating art. Thank you so much for joining me on Mr. Otter's studio. I hope you have a wonderful day.